Howdy folks, James at Wrexham, wrexham.com.au, Wrexham is what we do, and welcome to another video. As you can see, I got a cool new shirt here, they just came from Vistaprint for me to like try. They're actually really comfortable, kind of make your shoulders pop a little bit, I really like it. Um, if you're interested in getting some, let me know and I'll, I'll put some up on the website, and, you know, and that'll be great. So, I have an idea for a video, and I just want you guys to know that the 6.5s is more available on the website at the moment. And we're looking at getting uh, the 224 caliber is going to start a run now. So they're about to go up on the website as well. And, um, you know, they'll just be on a back order process as, as we go. So our stuff's still working with the engineer and everything's going really well. And that's, um, and the, for those people who've ordered the shirts, they are coming shortly. I will keep you posted straight away. So anyway, my idea for this video, and I've been thinking quite a bit about this, is with everything that we do as hunters and shooters and people play with thermal and all this sort of stuff is there's always things that we would do again and things that we would do differently. So I'm going to show you my rig, which is the 22 Creed more, and I'm going to tell you what I really like about it and what I would change next time. So when it comes time to buy an next rifle, maybe there'll just be a couple more things for you to think about a couple of things to maybe chuck in the knowledge vault and you know, something that we can all talk about. Okay, here we go. Okay, so if you take a close look at this video, when the dog gets hit in the chest, I've slowed it down 50%, you see a massive chunk of some important part of dog anatomy go flying up in the air. And I think that's really cool because it just shows it how effective these 75 grainers really are. I mean, it hits like a freight train. So here we go. And there's that muzzle break in action. Look at that big chunk fly up there. Like the crosshair barely moved from that 22 Creed, even though it was launching a heavy pill. Man, this is the pig, and watch this action. Boom, down. Okay, guys, here is my my baby, I guess. Here's kind of my rifle. So a little bit of a, a fly-through of it. And um, this is my varmint cannon, basically. Um, so we're not going to worry about the thermal scope. So I want to have a chat about that in a separate video, which I'll probably do tonight anyway. But let's just focus on the rifle for now. I'm going to start from the skeleton and work our way out. And from the very start, we're going to talk about the Hauer action. And I'm going to say, would I build off it again or not? And we're going to move on through the rest of the rifle like that. So yeah, absolutely. Hauer actions and ticker actions are my favorite. I absolutely love the Hauer action. It's so easy to you know, um, build a rifle from. They're cheap as dirt and they're reliable. So Nasi used to say, you know, you can have it cheap, fast or safe, pick two. Well, the Hauer is reliable, you know, accurate and cheap in all three, which is like fantastic, right? So, um, and, and there's so many options for it. So anyway, Hauer, I'm very happy. They're super rugged actions and they're fantastic. Bit clunky compared to a ticker or something, but whatever. The barrel that I'm running is a Allen Swan rifle barrel. It's a 24 inch barrel that is a one and eight twist with a heavy varmint profile, the same as Howard's um, original, just so it would fit the barrel channel better. It's chambered in 22 Creedmoor. Would I do that again? Yes, absolutely. Now, it's important to say too that I'm not sponsored by anyone. Nobody pays me anything or anything like that. But I, I am a customer of Grant Swans and I've got to be honest, the quality of the barrel is better than I could ever shoot and has been. And that's why I have eight of them in my safe. I'm happy to always go back there. They've been very accommodating and they make absolutely brilliant barrels. Um, the only thing that I might do with the barrel is get it remachined or my next barrel as a medium fluted profile. I really don't think for 90% of us that we really need a heavy varmint contour. Um, I think it's really heavy and it's unnecessarily so because most of us go out, we shoot a few rounds, we drive around for 20 minutes, we shoot a few more, unless you're sitting there like plug and ruse like 500 a night. I don't think the heavy varmint barrel is really worth the extra weight of carrying this thing around, even in the truck, like it's, it's pretty heavy, so that's what I would do differently. But you know, Swan Barrels 100% always and my go to. Next is the muzzle brake. Now, funny story about the muzzle brake, right? I watched this video and it was like the 50 best muzzle brakes tested with like a, a recoil gauge and all this sort of thing. 
and the second best performer was actually the cheapest and i went looking for photos of it online and it was sold by a guy named Gunbloke, and that's the profile of it there if you want to have another look and um honestly guys it was like 50 70 100 bucks i, I can't remember but it was cheap and it works man like you can't deny like when you look at that little dog at 150 meters a crosshair barely moves like it it just took, takes all the sting out of it not that there is any in a 22 creedmoor anyway but for follow-up shots it's great would i do it again i don't know it's kind of cool being on there it hasn't really hung up on anything yet would i do it again i don't know but for now it's going to sit there maybe i'll go to a 22 inch and then put it on the end because it does get a bit long it's another inch and a half or so on top of your, your barrel length already but do they work yeah and is it cool yep is it really loud yep <laughs> like um pros and cons right okay moving on now this is something i am quite fond of this is made by legacy sports and it is the polymer magazines available at most gun shops um, and it's obviously the polymer base plate or floor plate, um, which are pretty much available everywhere. Now, a lot of people worry about the polymer floor plates and stuff like that. But for me, these have been critical in getting really good feeding with sharp shoulder angles on cases. So Creedmoor, um, Ackley, anything like that, that has a steep shoulder angle, being able to run it as an inline feed instead of a stepped feed has been really good for getting consistent feeding. So I'm a big fan of these. My 6.5 WSM is built off a howler long action. It wouldn't feed at all, like unless you had one of these in it. So it's got one of these with a 300 WSM and I'll do a video on my 6.5 WSM shortly because it is my favorite thing in the world. I love that cannon, it is just awesome. And in fact, hopefully we'll get me some deer very shortly. So would I do that again? Absolutely. The trigger has just been modified and um, it's light, it's about a pound. It, it's a stock trigger that's been modified. Talk to your gunsmith about it. It's great to do. Okay guys, let's, let's talk about the stock. Now again, I'm not paid by anyone, okay? But I'm getting a BAR stock made, custom with Wrexham stuff all over it. I can't wait. It's gonna be super cool. Um, this is just a Hogue pillar bedded stock that came with a rifle. It was cheap and camo and I thought this looks really, really cool. Is it a good stock? No. <laughs> I bedded it, which helped, um, you know, with my own, just a, a compound. I think it's called Comp Set 120 or something like that. But you know, it's it's a two part epoxy. There's a million out there. You can, even the bunning stuff like the RP7 or RX7 or whatever it is that you can mix up in a tube that's black will work. Um, once it goes off and cures hard, it, it's it's a great thing to do. I also filled the forend and the buttstock with resin. So this thing weighs a ton. It really does. Would I do that again? No, absolutely not. I would just get the stock that I want and, and a nice timber stock, whether it's a Boyd's or anything like that would probably be a better bet, to be honest, and, and make sure you bet it as well and bet it well. Um, so yeah, anyway, that, that's pretty much my, my go-to. That Look, I mean, if it is just a Boyd stock, uh, sorry, a um, Hogue stock that comes with your Howa, don't despair. You know, if you just bet it, you do get hole and hole action. You really do it 100 yards. It's, it's fine. But I just don't really like it. Um, you know, and again, so... All in all, great rifle. 22 Creedmoor is one of my favorite calibers, absolutely. Don't be afraid of the Legacy Sports magazines if you like an inline feed and like a magazine. It works really well. Um, you know, the muzzle brake, you know, any mini money mo. The barrel, again, Alan, Alan Swan, great barrel. Uh, might ask him if he can machine it down to a medium profile. You know, like I gotta be honest, I think most of us, right, we don't shoot 400 ruse a night. I I think, you know, a medium lighter profile for most of us is probably more than enough in a 22 caliber. So just have a think about that and ask yourself, you know, do you shoot a few rounds, drive around, shoot a few more, you know, five rounds and 20 minutes, 30 minutes later when the barrel's cool, you have another go. You're not really going to lose accuracy in five rounds, you know, like, um, it's not going to make a huge amount of difference, but it might make a lot of difference being comfortable carrying it around having it on your arm at night, things like that. Okay, cool. 
Guys, hope that's been helpful. Check out the website. The 2 to 3 caliber stuff will be up by tomorrow. Back orders are going to be open again for a lot of this stuff. Stay tuned. Hope that's been fun. And I'll, I'll do a video on the thermal now. Okay, cool. That's my rig. See ya.